Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how we can place 3D animated dragon into a live footage in Blender easily. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that if you end up liking this video please click on that like button do share this content and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing my channel and support me. And by the way, if you like short 3D simulation videos, you can check out my second channel, link in the description. So now without any further ado, let's start today's video. So here I'm using Blender 3.1, nice. So now let's select everything here in this default scene by pressing A on the keyboard and delete. So first of all, just click on this plus icon, come to this VFX and change this to motion tracking viewport. So this is the motion tracking work area. So from here we can load our footage just simply click on this open and locate your footage so here i got my footage here so simply select the footage and open clip so here you can see we got the footage here so first of all we need to set the frames of this footage so for time being if i show you the default render settings you can see this output properties like it is set to 1 to 250 frames with a frame rate of 24. So if I click on this set scene frames option here, we can see it is set to 322, which is the duration of this actual footage. And anyway, we need to set the frame rate equal to this footage frame rate. So this footage frame rate is 29.97. Here you can see we got that information and resolution is full HD only. So resolution is matching. Now we need to match the frame rate so this is 29.97 so change this to 29.97 and now come to this render properties scroll down come to this color management and change this view to standard so this is actual footage nice so after that just click on this prefetch option so that it loads the images or data into the cache folder so simply click on this prefetch so here you can see it is loading and by any way if the loading is stopped in between of anything so here i think it has covered all the frames in the memory so for example if the memory has stopped at 218 or the cache is stopped at 218 frames just come to this edit option preferences come to the system here we need to increase the memory cache limit so for me it is set to 4000 at that time it is not tracking or it is not getting the cache completely so i have increased this memory cache limit to 7505 then it is getting that memory completely so simply increase this memory cache limit and after that we can close this one or else we can save the preference let me save the preferences and close and after that click on this prefetch so after that we will get all the data stored into our memory cache okay so now if i move forward here we can see we got this camera moment so we need to add some track points first so we can do that manually or we can allow blender to detect that feature so if you want to allow blender to detect that one simply click on this detect features we'll get some track points here after that we need to track that so in order to track we can press ctrl plus t or else we can click on this icon here so if i click on this we can see it is tracking so here we need to have minimum eight tracking points so once we got the eight tracking points we can solve that so let me move on to this solve and simply click on this solve camera so here we will get the solve error so this is 1.37 anything less than one pixels will be good so this is the automatic process so here i will select the track points manually so let me show you how to do that so undo and undo no. so let me come to this track so in order to select or add track points manually first we need to select any contrasted area so first i will set a track point here so hold ctrl key and press mouse left click so we got a track point created now press alt s to get the track area so this is the tracking area so in order to view this track point clearly click on this track options now we can see from here also we can adjust the track position so once the track position is set we can press ctrl plus a t so here the tracking is done throughout the timeline so if i scroll here observe at this corner point our track point is staying in its position so this is well and good 
So once the tracking is done and the tracking stays in its position, we can lock the markers by pressing Ctrl plus L to avoid any accidental movements. Okay. So Blender requires eight track markers minimum. So we need to find eight tracking markers or we need to set the markers here. So let me come to this position. So here I will place a marker. So be on the first one while doing that. Hold Ctrl K, left click, and if you want to increase the scaling, press S and increase the scale. Okay, after that, we can adjust the marker position here. So now again, press Ctrl plus T, or else you can simply click on this icon here. So this is also done tracking and it is completed. So we can lock this camera track also. So press Ctrl plus L to lock that one. So this track point has stopped at 88th frame. So at till 87th frame, the tracking is okay after 87th frame it will be out of the frame here so here till here i want the track point so further press e on the keyboard and select this clear track path so we'll have the track information till 87th frame after that we won't get that track interrupted nice so again this tracker also got out of the frame at 82nd frame so come behind one frame forward that is 81st frame now press E on the keyboard, select this clear track path. So you'll get 81 frames track here. Now lock that one. Nice. So here our tracking is done and I have added more than 8 track points here. So now we need to solve the camera. So further click on this solve option. Scroll down, click on this solve camera motion. So here you can see we got this solve error of 191.27 pixels which is not at all acceptable. We should get this value less than one pixel so we can either select this markers manually or else we can see the error value of each marker here so in order to get that value click on this display click display and enable this info so now if we select any marker here we get the error value so this marker has value of 427.61 pixels so now let me select the marker and let me delete this one delete that marker and let me solve this once again now we got 234 okay let me select this marker so this got 866 pixels so delete this one also again solve the camera now we got 1.37 pixels so now we need to search another marker so let me see this one so this got 1.65 let me see this one i think it is not visible let me see this one this is 1.91 pixels so let me select this and delete now again solve this camera now we got 0.94 so now let me select this marker so it got value error of 1.99 so delete this marker and solve the camera once again so now we got 0.79 pixels which is acceptable so you can check the marker values and we can delete them to get this better value so for this i will be leaving this to 0 0.7 and pixels so after solving this error value we need to set up the scene so for that scroll down and click on this setup tracking scene here so here we got our scene so now let's move back to this layout so here in layout we are not getting our footage visible so in order to view our footage see through this camera just click on this camera icon here now we can see our footage but the track markers are not visible here so in order to get these track markers visible here come to these options and enable this motion tracking camera path if you want to have this camera path moment and also if you want to have the marker names we can select that so here you can see we got this track markers so here let me select this track marker so i will select the track marker here and let me move back to this motion tracking so this is the track which i have selected and simply click on this set origin so now this is set to origin you can see we got our objects at this track point so again move back to this layout now if you want to increase the scaling of this object we can do that let me select this ground and the cube press s and increase the scaling okay so now we need to adjust the perspective of this 3d objects so that it matches with the perspective of our original footage so for that we need to select the camera press r y 
and let me rotate this in y axis r x and let me rotate so now i think this perspective is matching so let me delete the plane or let me hide out this plane here so and also let me hide out this camera path and also let me hide out this marker names so now if i play this you can see our cube is staying in its position which is okay nice so now let's place this cube on the top of the grid so for this scene it is not necessary for me to place this cube above to the grid because i want to place a dragon object here in this free 3d space suppose if you are tracking a ground area and if you want to place 3d object exactly on the ground floor we need to place this cube just above to the grid here so let me press g and hold shift key and let me place this okay so now if i play this we can see we got a good track here nice so now let me hide out this cube in viewport and let me import the dragon model so here i got this model from sketchfab download link in the description and it is an fbx file download it in fbx format so let me import that one so go to this file option import select this fbx and locate the file so this is the file and import so here we got the dragon so let me increase the scaling so now we can see we got the dragon here and let me move on to this material viewport so this has got textures so we need to apply them so first of all let me animate the dragon and also let me have the animation completely so if i play here we will have this flying animation only up to few frames so you want to have this animation throughout the timeline so for that let me change this to non-linear animation click on this action push down action one and from here press n on the keyboard let me expand this one come to this strip options scroll down action clip and from here we can repeat that one so simply increase the value so now we will have that animation throughout our timeline nice let me drag this below and again let me change this to timeline so come to the starting frame so now let me animate the position of this dragon so select the armature select the move tool let it be here so first of all let me place the dragon at this position okay so let it be here like this so press i on the keyboard add a keyframe for location rotation and scan move to the last frame so first of all let me save this project i don't know when it get crashes so file save so now move to the last frame come to the last frame now let me bring the dragon here and also let me rotate this here a bit so that it is facing the camera and also let me place this here in this way so i think this is okay press i once again add a keyframe for location rotation and scale so now if i play this we will get the position scaling animation but the speed will not be constant because of the graph so let me select both the keyframes so make sure we have selected both keyframes press t on the keyboard and change it to linear so now the movement will be same so you'll get the dragon moving here towards the camera nicely nice so now let's add the texture so select this mesh which is in this purple color move on to this shading tab click on the shading so here we got this node already so while downloading only we'll get the textures so simply we need to apply those textures so click on this folder icon and here we got the texture and open image now we can see we got the texture move back to this layout once again and now we can hide out this armature select the armature press h on the keyboard to hide it out and now if i play this we can say we got dragon into our scene nice which is looking okay so if you want to increase the scaling further we need to get the armature back select the armature make sure you are on this first keyframe press s and increase the scaling 
press i on the keyboard again add a keyframe for location rotation and scaling because we have added scaling also so come to the last frame again press s and increase the scaling and if you want we can bring it here like this and press i and add rotation location so now if i play this we can say we got our dragon in the scene or else let me place this here press i okay so now in order to sell this effect we need to create shadows here so in order to make shadows let me head with the armature first okay so in order to add shadows we need to have a light in the scene so we got this light here so i will hide out these lights so let me disable in render also i will add a sunlight first so first let me move on to this render viewport so currently this is looking dark because there is no light in the scene now let's add a light so go to this add light add sunlight here so come to this light options and let me increase the strength value to 3 so we got the light so let me place this press s so i'll press r on the keyboard and let me rotate this one here like this okay so in order to make this 3d objects blend into the scene we need to add an hdri image so since i don't have that i will be using environment only here the footage only it is not the best way to do that as i don't have that hdri i will be using the same footage so in order to get that footage use as hdra come to this world properties color add this environment texture now from here i will select the footage only so open so select the footage and open so now we can see we got the lighting in the scene so here we don't want this hdr to be visible actually so come to this render properties scroll down come to this film options and make it transparent okay so we'll have the lighting but it will not be visible that hdra will map will not be visible here so enable ambient occlusion let me change the distance to three enable screen space reflections refractions okay so now we got this light in the scene so i think we can reduce the strength to one okay so we got the light in the scene but shadows are not visible so first we need to create a plane replicating the building shape so first we need to model that one so select this dragon model press h on the keyboard to hide it now add mesh a plane press s on the keyboard increase the scaling or and let me rotate this one along the x-axis okay so press tab on the keyboard for edit mode and let me place this here so that it matches the shape of this building so let me place this here let me place this or let me move it here completely and i think this one will be fine okay now let me select this both these vertices press e on the keyboard and move along the y-axis so move along the y-axis here like this and again extend this one here okay and again select these vertices here now press e on the keyboard press y once again and move along this y-axis simply i'm making the structure of the building which is here so i'm getting the structure of the building created and now let me select this below vertices and let me drag them here downwards and again select this and let me drag them up okay so now we got a plane created which is matching to the building here so in order to make this a shadow catcher come to this render settings render engine change to cycles enable gpu if you got gpu enable it and come to this visibility option and come to this visibility option here and make this plane as shadow catcher so now if i bring back the object so let me come to this dragon so now we can see we are getting some shadows here of the dragon so this is nice so first let me change this to ev once again and let me select the mesh of the dragon come to this material and here i want to give that a metallic look a bit and i will reduce the roughness because i want some shiny texture of shiny skin reduce the roughness come to this output properties here i will show you how to render that one how to render the scene so we need to set the frame rate to 29.97 which is our actual footage frame rate 
render region crop to render region so make sure the resolution is set to full hd or whichever resolution you are using so i want full hd here so i leave this to here so start frame and end i want complete footage and here i will select an output file to save the render so let me select a file location so here i have selected a folder to save the rendered file and file format i will change this to ffmpeg video which is nice and okay so once this is done let's move back to the cycles engine or else if you want to render in ev you can do that but we will be missing the shadows so let me hide out this plane and in render also and if you want to see the quick preview we can come to this view options click on this view render animation so it will render the viewport animation here so we can disable the grid grid lines everything here so that we can see the viewport animation so you can check the animation before rendering out so now our viewport render animation is complete so let me show you how it looks like so here we got that viewport render so let me show you so if i play this you can see we got our viewport render here so if everything looks fine we can move to exact or final render so this is okay for me so i will render the scene now so let me delete this one i don't want that now so now change this engine to cycles okay enable gpu so after that enable this denoise option also if you want to enable motion blur you can enable that one so i will enable motion blur here so now come to this output properties full hd is okay for me and the frame rate 29.97 frame start and end everything is okay same location same file format i will leave this to ffmpeg video okay after that i think i need to reduce the samples here so come to this render yeah so samples the maximum samples is set to where is this sorry not here this is uh, here this render samples i will reduce this to um, i think 40 samples is enough for me and noise samples also 40 enough for me if you want to have much better result we can increase this maximum samples value so since my lab or device doesn't support or takes much time for the samples i am reducing this to 40 samples here so now if i render this in ev let me show you one thing so if i render this ev so if i render this in ev we'll get our cube plane everything in this scene so first we need to hide them so select the cube hide in render and this plane we want because we want shadows right so i will leave it in render so make sure we have left the plane in render or else we won't get the shadows so i left the plane so this is the ground plane hide this ground plane also okay and now change this to cycles and now we can render this scene out so let me save this once again and after having these settings done just click on this render animation nice so it starts to animate our 3d characters first and later our footage so in this way we can add this 3d flying dragon into our live footage easily using blender so hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial if you have learned anything new please like share and subscribe my channel to support me so we'll meet in the next video until then signing off take care bye